Someone asked, my wife is depressed. She isn't herself anymore. And she doesn't really contribute around the house in the way she did. I want to help her, but I'm also frustrated with her. How do I help her? You know, it's often difficult in marriage when one or the other spouse disappoints the other. It's difficult when our expectations are not met, when suddenly or maybe even progressively things change, attitudes change, heart attitudes change, functionality changes, and we find that our spouse is becoming weaker in areas maybe we took for granted in the past. In any marriage, there are expectations that a man has of his wife and a wife of her husband. And they're not the same for every single marriage. They're different depending upon the personalities involved. Clearly, in this particular case, your wife is struggling with something. She may not even be able to put her finger on it, but something in her psychological makeup has changed. Maybe it's some disappointment or some fear or something that has been accentuated in her that she never anticipated or expected to happen. There are so many different reasons why people become depressed. The question for you is, how do I help her? What do I do to minister to someone who is struggling with depression, where the expectations are not being met and where frustration has set in? You know, in the Old Testament, there is a wonderful passage of scripture, Psalm 84, which speaks of a pilgrimage that Jewish people took to go into Jerusalem to enter the temple, uh, perhaps once a year, to dwell in that place that they had heard of, that place they were separated from, and they would emigrate from all over the area to go to Jerusalem on someday during the course of the year to worship in the temple. It was something they looked forward to. Their Christmas, if you will. There was a sense of expectation that was there. But to get from point A to the temple was a dangerous, dangerous and difficult journey. A journey they could not make alone. A journey they had to either travel in groups or with a dependence upon others to help them get through these dangerous points, places where they could be robbed or even murdered. But their eyes were fixed on the goal. The goal was to dwell in the temple of the Lord. The imagery in Psalm 84 even talks about how the traveler, the pilgrim saw the birds nesting in the temple and how beautiful it was to spend one day in the temple than a thousand days anywhere else. But right in the middle of that passage, uh, the writer of this Psalm makes this incredible statement. He says, blessed are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. As they go through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The early rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength each one appears before God in Zion. Now that's interesting imagery if you know exactly what he's talking about. In order to get to the temple, they would have had to travel through the desert. And in the desert, there was no water. Uh, it was a long, arduous journey. And what would happen in the desert is that there would be these sudden storms, these sudden downpours. and pilgrims would dig holes so that the water could collect in those holes. And they would drink out of those little ponds that were made by these sudden storms. And they would dig a second hole and a third hole that they would not drink out of. And then they would move ahead because the pilgrims coming behind them had the full expectation that ahead of them, someone has dug the holes. Someone has provided uh, the rain for them, the drink for them, that someone will have helped them by being ahead of them in the game. And so they would travel, as the scripture says here, from strength to strength. That's literally from pool to pool to pool, depending on someone ahead of them to have done their job 
and dig the holes. In this particular case, uh, the one who is depressed and, and the one who is not depressed are in two different stations of life. One is back here, the other one is up here. And the one who is further ahead in the game needs to dig the pools. Someone needs to dig the holes and pull the weary traveler along, making decisions that make it easier for your wife to move from point A to point B, uh, making it easier for her to get up in the morning, making it easier for her to function by taking away from her burdens that she can't even conceive that she would be able to accomplish in that day. And so you move from strength to strength as you are moving her from strength to strength with your eyes fixed on the goal. The goal is a victory. The goal is the victory that comes only in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the temple we seek to be a part of. He is the one we seek to inhabit as he inhabits the praises of his people. So it might be something as simple as fixing her breakfast or asking her, what can I do today to help you take the next step forward? Rather than becoming disappointed and frustrated and maybe even angry with her, perhaps you can look at what you can do, what you can do to dig the holes that are necessary for her to find the refreshment in the desert she finds herself in. Friends, that's what marriages are all about. It's when one is weak, the other is strong. When one is strong, the other is weak. And we build, we complement each other, and we pull each other along as we learn to dig those holes. There have been times in my own marriage where it has been difficult for me to function and vice versa for my wife to function. And it's always comforting to know that she or I, whichever one is in the functional depression role, is, is finding the other, picking up the slack, taking the steps forward that are necessary to keep the home moving as the other emerges from their depression. That's what marriage is all about. It's uh, one pulling the other along, digging those holes, filling those holes with the necessary nutrients that will help to build the marriage and help that functionally depressed person to move along in the next step. I want to encourage you, that's what love is all about. That's how Christ has loved us. Uh, if Christ gave up on us every time we were low, or even when we failed to take on our responsibilities, he would have given up on us a long time ago. And I know you can say amen to that. So as Christ has loved you, so you must now love your wife.